We all know about the C programming language, the language, not the book with the exact same name. And we all have our own ideas about whether it's a good language, whether it's good for this use case or that use case. And I'm sure there's going to be a long discussion in the comments about why C is the greatest language ever created. But in a recent video, the video wasn't even about C whatsoever. I made an offhand comment saying that C is a low level programming language. And that led to a really, really, really long comment thread about what a high and a low level language actually is. And you can read countless books and articles, but here's the ultimate problem. High and low level language are relative terms. For there to be a high and a low level language, there needs to be some sort of middle point, some sort of point of reference to compare against to say that something is high or a low level. Now, if you're one of those people that think that C is never a low level language and there is no discussion to be had about where this point of reference is located, I would like to read some quotes from Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie, the writers of the C programming language book, where they say, C is a relatively low-level language. C provides no operations that deal directly with composite objects such as character strings, sets, lists, or arrays. There are no operations that manipulate an entire array or string. And also, C is not a very high-level language, nor a big one. These quotes have existed in the book since the first edition back in 1978, demonstrating that terms like high-level language and low-level language were definitely in use at the time, even if they may not have been as popular as they are today. And by saying things like relatively low level and not a very high level, it is implicitly comparing the language against other things that may exist. It's not a very low level in comparison to something like, say, assembly, but it's not a very high level language in comparison to something like, say, basic, but it still has some elements of being a higher level language compared to other things that may exist. But when you have a discussion, you run into a problem. If you don't make that point of comparison explicit, all the participants in the discussion have to rely on their own implicit understanding of where that reference point is located. So one common place you'll see the reference point is right here, placed between assembly and C. So we may say that a high level language is a language that provides the following or less control. A language that has constructs that abstract away working directly with memory. Things like basic data types, things like strings, arrays, structs, and things like that. But maybe it also does provide direct memory access, but this is not the primary interaction method. And we could keep listing differences between C and assembly, but if you think this is the distinction point between high and low level languages, then I think you're going to agree that that's gonna do a good enough job. So basically anything with more control and less help is a low level language and anything with less control and more help is a high level language. But depending on the material you read, you may see that C is referred to as like a mid-level or a medium-level language, but until doing research for this video, I had literally never heard that term. But what if we're not talking about the space of all programming languages? What if we're just talking about, say, very, very low-level embedded work? Well, Scratch obviously doesn't matter. Python doesn't matter. Java doesn't matter. C++ in some contexts might, so we'll leave it on the list. And everything lower certainly does. But maybe in this case, the distinction point, the point of reference, isn't high-level constructs. It's instead whether the language has human readable names, in which case you would place the middle point right here. So machine code is a low level language, but anything above that would be a high level language. Now you might be saying assembly isn't a machine independent language, and that's totally true. But the reason why that doesn't matter is because in the case of embedded work, you're generally writing the code for that system, and that is the only place it is ever going to run, machine independence isn't even part of the question. But what if we go in the complete opposite direction and say, you want to teach your kid their first programming language? Well, in this case, machine code definitely doesn't matter. Assembly definitely doesn't matter. Maybe if you hate your kid, C? Uh, you know what, I'll let you have C. I'm sure some of you out there, C was your first language. 
but let's say they're also fairly young and you just want to get them somewhat interested in programming, you're probably going to give them some sort of drag and drop language so they're not being bogged down by things like syntax. So maybe your middle point is going to be here and you say that anything that has handwritten code is going to be a low level language. So now things like make and code, scratch, beetle blocks are all high level languages but even something like Python, with the syntactic complexity it has, would be a low-level language. And earlier in the video, I brought up the idea of a mid or a medium-level language. But depending on who you ask and depending on what you read, you might also run across things like mid to low, mid to high, higher, even higher, even higher than higher. I made up that last one, but the point I'm getting at here is you can break down this list basically as much as you need to. And while these are not typically used in discussion, none of these are fundamentally wrong. You can break down the list as much as you want to. While we can say the distinction point is relative, another problem we have is how do we actually order the list? We can certainly say things like C is probably above assembly. And we can say things like PHP is probably somewhere above C. But what about languages that you can't easily order? Let's say something like SQL. SQL is a fundamentally different type of language. It's declarative and it's specialized for data operations. Sure, it's probably above C, probably above C++, but where? Where would you put it? But even a language like Java, where would this be located? Because when you write Java code, you're not targeting the hardware or targeting that system, you're targeting the JVM. So are virtual machines above Python, below Python, somewhere in between some other languages? I don't really know. I think it depends on what you're valuing and what you're trying to do with the language. Is it lower than Python because Python is a scripting language? Does scripting language actually mean anything that matters in this case? It depends on what you're doing. Yes, I like to massively overthink things. No, I'm not making a video on the distinction between a scripting language and a programming language. Now, I'm sure someone is going to try to discredit this entire video saying no. The distinction point is always located right here. It has never moved and it's never going to move. And that is not entirely wrong. There is one definition where the distinction point is right there and it has never moved and it probably never will. But there are other ways you can look at high and low level language where you can say, this is the space of languages we're looking at. Here is the things I actually consider important and this is how we're going to distinguish it. This is why it's incredibly important to define the terms you're actually using. If we're talking about things like high and low level languages, if you're working with this definition and I'm working with a definition that is relative to the work I'm trying to do, we're never going to have a discussion that amounts to anything meaningful. And as I mentioned back at the start, even Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie use these terms in a relative fashion, saying C has both low level features and higher level ones. If you're still not convinced though, do a quick search engine search for is C a high level language? And you'll see people using this term for years and years now in this same relative fashion. It depends on the space you're talking about. At the end of the day though, this discussion of whether something is a high or a low level language really doesn't matter. What matters is what the language can do, the libraries that are available, the tools that interact with it, maybe it has a package manager, maybe it doesn't, and all of that stuff. Whether it's high or low level is basically just a waste of mental energy, and the only reason why I made this video is because a comment thread really annoyed me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you agree that high and low level language is a relative term and the reference point can be moved? Or are you one of those people that think that C is always going to be a high level language and nothing can be said otherwise? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to only Barapay, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.